Hey everyone, it's Hayes and in today's video we are once again going to do the Miraculous Monday meme review where my friend Hedge finds me the very best memes from across the internet and I've just suddenly realised now the season is over, are these memes gonna dry up? Oh my god, I don't know. I mean, Ahmed who usually makes all the memes you see on the community post, he never runs out of ideas. Also, by the way, there is a tiny, tiny, minuscule little fly thing in my room. It's over there right now. It may move during the video. I tried to get it out before I started filming. Wasn't having it. Honestly, it's so small. I don't think you'd be able to pick it up on camera if it landed on the wall behind me or anything like that. So, um, but if you do say anything, I know. <laughs> I don't know when it got in here, but um, yeah, <laughs> there's something in here, but I doubt you'll see it. But anyway. Let's start the meme review. So, the first meme. Adrian tells Marinette about his mum. Catmaw tells Ladybug about his mum. Ladybug, wait, do I have a thing for blonde guys with dead mums? Absolutely you do, Marinette. I mean, <laughs> like, I'm just... This quantum masking thing. I know it was kind of something they kind of more introduced in, like, season three, but I was like, you kind of screwed yourselves over with it because in dark cupid in the poem Adrian writes for ladybook he acknowledges that she has like bluebell eyes and stuff so I'm like he does know what she looks like but he's just like I do not see it so I'm like come on this is too much of a coincidence yeah yeah like, I'm not too fussed about it in the film since spoils for the end of the movie she finds out who he is at the end anyway but I was just like really annoys me in the show to be fair, no, Cat Noir has never told Ladybug, I'm pretty sure, about his family situation. Like, they don't really disclose personal details. I think the only thing they know is they're about roughly the same age and that they're dating someone. Like, what episode was it? Was like the start of, I wanna say migration, I'm not sure that's correct, but one of the episodes this season after like deflagration anyway, the talk is like, oh, I have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> so they know the other person's dating. That's literally it. Oh, I just wish they talk more in the show. But I'm like, are the two of you? Not even just the two of them, everyone else. Like, if you never question, like, oh, where's Adrian during the Sakuma fight? Where's Marinette? Nowhere. Because they're. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Next me. You really like the Miraculous movie and love that it is a musical. You find out 99% of the fandom hates that it's a musical. I don't know why. Also, some people were confused it was a musical and were going in expecting it to not be a musical and they were surprised when it ended up being one and I'm like correct me if I'm wrong but I have known since before I started making videos about Miraculous that it was going to be a musical like I thought it was like a wildly known fact like it's fine if you don't like musicals it's totally fine I know they're not for everybody but like I like I was just confused when like people commenting like I'm surprised it was a musical and I'm like we've known for like three years <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it. Honestly, to me though, it wasn't a proper musical to me. Like I have seen many musicals on stage in the West End. So the West End's like the UK equivalent of Broadway. It's in London um, and all the West End shows will tour up north where I live as well. So I've seen them live in London. I've also seen some shows on tour up in the north of the country where I live. Um, and I've seen a lot of musical movies, whether they were originally a Broadway show or a West End show first, or just made into like a movie musical, something like The Greatest Showman, for example. I'm pretty sure that's not a musical production anywhere, or maybe it is now, but like prior to it. Like a lot of times, like for example, Les Miserables, it was originally a Broadway or West End show, I'm not sure where it started, and then it was made into the film version, whereas The Greatest Showman, I think, started as a film and it may be adapted for the theatre. Like Shrek, for example. Shrek isn't a musical, it was originally the DreamWorks film franchise and is now a musical, so. They sometimes work the other way. So I've seen loads of musicals and whilst it's a musical in the sense it had musical numbers in, it didn't have like the variety of musical numbers I was expecting. First of all, I was expecting more <laughs> than what we got, at least two more. And as well, like, for me like part of a musical is that you have at least you know one group number you know um we got no group numbers so we had loads of marinette solos a 
ladybug and cat noir duet, a ladybug and tiki duet, and a hawk moth solo. And there's actually two Adrian solos, but for whatever reason, they cut one in the Netflix version. It's on the soundtrack, it's called Alone Again, and it's the version I saw at the premiere. Had Alone Again in when I was in Paris for the premiere. But uh, yeah, it was just like loads of solos and some duets. And don't get me wrong, I love all the songs from the musical, but like, to me, it wasn't a proper musical. It was more of a film with songs in it rather than a musical movie. Just, just because of the way I view musicals, like I've seen loads of them. I think the first one I saw um, in London was Legally Blonde. If you've seen Legally Blonde the musical, it opens and ends and all the way through, like with big numbers involving all the cast. Like, you know, if there was gonna be a big group number, I'd have Chloe and Alia and Nino all singing in it. I know they didn't have the rest of the kids, but like they should like, be dancing in the background. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, if the sequel's gonna be a musical, because I would assume it's gonna be, I would hope for a group number, because what I'm hoping is that Chloe, Alia, and Nino, or maybe just Alia, I don't know, are gonna get a miraculous. So hopefully they'll get some songs, and maybe then there can be a bigger group number that way. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, it was just missing for me some like fundamentals of a musical, basically. But anyway, I like the fact it's musical. I know they're not for everyone. I just can't believe there were some people who didn't even know it was a musical <laughs> when they went to watch it. <laughs> anyway, next meme. Uh, who wants the reveal to happen? Yes, everyone. Who wants it to be memory wiped? Too bad, it will. Literally every single time. How many times have you had it now? Cat Blank, Ephemeral, Oblivio. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Although I really think um, I think this video is going up before the Reverse special. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Um, I really, really think the other Mariner and Adrian know each other's identities. I think they are like in this together as some sort of miraculous <laughs> power couple, like evil power couple though. I think they know what's going on because like, unless, because part, of, maybe it's just my desire. I kind of want to see them dating just because obviously it's like a darker version of Adrianette. So I want to see what it's like basically. But like the only other way I could see it going is that they're, it's like they hate each other and they're like fighting against each other whilst also trying to get the butterfly. So everyone's against each other, which also would be kind of cool, but I kind of want to see them work together. I think that'd be so cool. And then maybe I saw someone leave this in my comments. Maybe one of them betrays the other. Oh, oh, I love it. There's so much potential. Like I think so far and as much as I love Aeon, and I know I'm saying this before I've seen the reverse special, just the general concept of it between the reverse Shanghai and New York because of the concept of the reverse special I think that's the one I want the spin-off for the most I haven't even seen it the only thing holding me back from wanting that one the most is Adrian to be fair his outfit has grown on me I don't mind reverse Adrian outfit it's reverse Adrian hair I don't know why they didn't just give him like a big emo fringe why is it like dangling down away from his eye defying the laws of gravity I don't know <laughs> <laughs> they should have just given him like a massive emo fringe. It's very strange. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love spin-offs for all of them. Like, how long ago were you promised them now? I don't... I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, next meme. Show Adrian is offered the chance to find out his childhood dream. Let's himself get hit. Has a nightmare. <laughs> gives up, quits being Cat Noir four separate times. Movie Adrian is completely at the mercy of a unbeatable supervillain. Claws him in the face. Adrian in the movie was absolutely everything. I absolutely loved Adrian in the movie. I think they did such a good job of showing how he really feels about his mum and the grief, both for him and Gabriel showing the grief. Because the only reason I know Gabriel is grieving in the show is because he doesn't shut up about it. We are told repeatedly that he is grieving. Whereas in the movie, whilst we are told sometimes like the base story of what's been going on, we are shown how Adrian is feeling. And he's just done so much better. In writing, there's this rule of show don't tell where basically more so when there's emotion when there's like an important plot point that has to be told obviously you can't be worked with everything but when there's some sort of emotion it's better to like for example show a character to be crying rather than that character to say i am sad they both communicate the same thing that this person is sad 
but obviously crying elicits the emotion more in the reader rather than just saying I am sad. Telling someone that you are sad doesn't really have the same emotional impact as them seeing you cry. So like whilst I 100% believe Gabriel is grieving in the show and not as much but towards the start of the show that Adrian was also grieving for his mum, I feel it much more in the movie because I am shown how each of them a feeling about it. So I think the movie just did loads of things about Adrian so much better, basically. Next meme. Uh, not even Oblivio can make Cat Noir forget the Lion King. Ladybug, that must be where the Akuma is hiding. Cat Noir, okay, I've got no idea what an Akuma Matata is, but I trust you. Is it an actual line from Oblivio? It's been so long since I've seen Oblivio. Can you tell? I mean, the Lion King surely does transcend all areas of memory, she says so confidently, despite only actually ever having seen it in musical form twice in London. I have never actually seen The Lion King. I know what happens, it's based off Hamlet. <laughs> and I, like I said, I've seen it twice on stage. But yeah, I've never seen the movie and I have Disney Plus. I could watch it right after filming this. I am not going to, but I could. <laughs> I could do. <laughs> Next meme. Uh, so we have Peter Parker. I want to watch the Miraculous movie and Harry's like, it's a cheesy musical that's disconnected from the show. And Peter's like, I just told you that I want to watch it. You don't have to convince me. <laughs> I think for me, that's definitely one of the appeals of it. A lot of people are asking me now I've got the Reva stuff, do I think it's like part of like this miraculous multiverse? I don't think so. Whilst the base show and the reverse are connected, I don't think the Miraculous movie is part of that at all. And honestly, I just think they did most things so much better. Honestly, the only things I'd wish is they shown a bit more of Gabriel's Descent into Madness, more Adrianette, and give Adrian a much better reason for why he got his Miraculous. Like, Marinette's amazing, saving Master Fu's life. Adrian just kind of found a cat in his room. Although, to be fair, I guess, since it's like the Kwamis that pick them, Plague's kind of lazy and it's like this boy was doing not much so I pick him <laughs> kind of thing, I don't know. But honestly, those are like the only things I'd personally change. Although I do find it very strange, like it's totally fine if you didn't enjoy the movie, that's fine. But I do find it very odd how I don't have any screenshots of this because I refuse to go on his Twitter account. But after the movie came out, Thomas Astruck was kind of bashing it he doesn't have to like it as the creator of the show and these characters and the overall IP. No, he doesn't have to like it. I get it. Like if someone made a movie adaptation of my book, do I have to like it? No, of course I don't. But to openly bash it on social media, I think is just kind of disrespectful. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not forcing Thomas to like it. He doesn't have to. He's entitled to his own opinion. But to openly bash it the way he did is just like, no. Like, I don't think Thomas has ever heard the phrase, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. Just shush. You didn't have to say anything. And I just love the absolute, like, night and day difference between Thomas and Jeremy. Like, like I said, I don't follow his Twitter account anymore, but when I did follow Thomas, he would spend, like, a good couple of hours, like, a week, replying to fans. Some of them were like good comments, quite a lot though were about negative stuff and criticisms. And whilst he's definitely within his right to respond to whatever he wants to respond to, I'm not controlling what he does on Twitter. However, Jeremy, Jeremy's more platforms on Instagram, he doesn't really post on Twitter all that much. So I understand they're on different platforms, but he just posts whatever, <laughs> whatever he wants. And if it's something to do with the movie, like he went to different premieres in different uh, countries and different cities, and the comment section would be full of negative stuff as well. And he just didn't say anything. You know? If you're wondering between the two of them who I prefer, it's definitely Jeremy. As evidenced by the selfie. <laughs> Next meme. Uh, okay, besties, I need all of you to listen closely. Hayes doesn't know I've done this and I don't have much time to get this message out. She has promised that if she gets 30,000 subscribers by Christmas, she will do the Miraculous theme song from Just Dance live on stream. I'm pretty sure I didn't say it live on stream. You all need to work together to make this happen. Subscribe now. I mean, hold on, right. I said, I said on a stream that if I got to 30k by Christmas, I'd do it. But I, if, I, if we get there, which I don't think we will, but if we do get there, I would practice it 
and then upload it as a separate video. I wouldn't do it live, just in case something goes wrong. Like singing on live was already, uh, if you didn't know, I sung for my birthday live stream. That was nerve wracking enough. So I would not dance live on stream. Um, I would not do that. Um, I would film it and do it. But I don't think I'm gonna get to 30K, which is a shame because I had my whole outfit planned out and I actually can dance, so. Your lost besties. Anyway, <laughs> next me. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. So Gabriel only lasted being the villain of Paris two years. I think it was technically more of a year actually. Meanwhile, Lila managed to trick him and steal the butterfly miraculous and become the future villain of Paris until Ladybug and Cat Noir became adults, which is probably like approximately 32 years. Of course, because miraculous timeline makes so much sense anyway. To be fair, we're not entirely sure that Marin and Adrian from Time Tiger is what I'm assuming they're referencing, they were adults. It was just the perspective of them made them look absolutely huge. The only reference we have of them being adults is Alex Bunnix being presumably the same age as in older Bunnix, who we like, saw at the start of evolution, who's in Time Tagger as well. So, however, I don't know if they're gonna do this. Maybe like messing around with time travel has maybe aged Alex. I don't know, something like that, maybe. Um, but like, it's not clear how old Alex was, to be honest, I have absolutely zero clue how old Alex was meant to be. And obviously, of course, Chris has grown up. But again, I'm not even sure what age Chris is meant to be in the show. I've guessed at about 10, but I don't know for sure. It has been confirmed, I'm not sure it has. And again, I'm not sure what age he's meant to be in Time Tiger. So yeah, I'm gonna be interested to see what happens with that. So the final meme of the meme review is the meme review viewer submission meme. So if you want to be in with the chance of getting your meme featured in the meme review, there's instructions on screen, but basically please come and join my Discord server. It's down below. Once you need to make the meme, it can't be a meme you just found, it has to be one you've made and you post it in the meme review of viewer submission meme, then everyone votes on it. But if you don't want to submit a meme, just come and join the Discord server because it's a fun time. So this week's winner is Acid Drop. When I'm in a girl boss competition and my opponent is now Natalie Sanka. I mean, I just drop out immediately, but I would also want to stay because Natalie, oh my god, as well. Still thinking reverse stuff. It's like in the back of my mind all the time at the minute because I'm so excited for it. What if Gabe Nath is a thing in this universe? I am going to die. I am so excited. <laughs> for the special. So besties, that was it for this week's meme review. I'd love to know what your favorite meme was and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.